you're going hot. Hey, let me know. Let me know when you're ready. I'm never ready, Captain. <laughs> no it's one my, is ever ready. It's my secret. But ah! are they ready for us in the rambles, which is live right now? What's the best part is we went live and immediately lost five people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's a good. Oh, we just lost our two. We just all of them. They all left. They saw us and they were like, "Oh wait, it's them. Never mind." Oh, yeah, wow. I was kind of hoping it was a new uh, cast. It's not. It's us forever, mm -hmm. forever. Welcome to the rambles. It's Friday morning. We're conscious. <laughs> that's where I am right now. We're conscious. We're moving. Did I, did I hide the logo so you can't see the mermaid? Oh maybe? no! Great. Now we're gonna get demonetized well, we by the mermaid rambles, coffee. We do the rambles at, at our private secret location, and they don't get gigabytes coffee anymore. Right. So. It's it's the bunker hidden several miles underground the main umbrella facility. That's true. Uh, that's where it is. It's we're, all the way down. Where nothing could ever go wrong. Nothing could ever go wrong as it beautifies and revitalizes. They your definitely genes. could never make a terrible TV series that that and then say it was completely faithful. To the, sh the games and it not be no it's not it and all it not be whatsoever so here we go. my heart was broken here we go let's open this up with some hotness resident evil is the overall resident evil cinematic universe is there anything good in there besides like two films i like maybe the, i like the alice movies i like their cheesy goodness the first one is i really like the first one a lot i like the second one i really the second one was fun too then for some reason some reason the third one like it's an apocalyptic world and vegas is covered in sand but yeah, then the fourth one that's all gone that's where they so lost <laughs> The, when they the sand Vegas one lost me and then the boat wasn't, fight it, it, with Wesker it, was, it wasn't the kung fu zombies no I was okay with that I, I was really like Resident Evil is insanity so I'm okay with it getting more and more insane as it goes along uh, but at the end part that Wesker fight is is legendarily bad yeah. like just some it's of the cheesy worst bad I mean it's a pity they did that the Welcome to Raccoon City and that was supposed to be like the comeback and then someone decided you know what we'll do we'll make a movie of the first two games mixed together yeah I don't I'll just make a movie of the game it's pretty easy. Take the cutscenes of the game. Hollywood call us. Make them into the movie. <laughs> we'll, we'll just make the game. Just, just put them Stick together. The storyline. Put it in the game. I've, I've wondered that when people do adaptations and stuff. Really, what like, I want is I want the, the remakes, you know, like the remasters. Mm -hmm. I want those, but without me having to play them. All right, so you can, I think <laughs> I just, just YouTube. Sit, I just didn't watch them happen. We don't like the old tank controls of Resident <laughs> Evil 2 where it's like, aim, turn slowly. I love those things. I remember Ooh. almost a jill sandwich. That was, <laughs> that was when they changed that in Resident Evil Four to like running and barrel rolls and stuff. It was yeah. like revolutionary because I could actually get away from the chainsaw I mean, I guy. Did, I did like Resident Evil Four. I love Resident Evil Four. I, it's it is that's the peak for me. Like goofy Resident Evil while yeah. still being horror. That's because I had the tiny little midget man. Yeah, uh, Salazar. 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 Yeah, that guy was great. Yes, yeah. I loved all everything about that. Was a really good game. I think. <laughs> I'm trying to remember what part of it make is. Make a Resident Evil midget game. They sh don't they? They make a board game. Oh, I was like, I think I've seen this. A board yeah. game. A well, game. you know, hold on. You're saying like I want to play with some zombies on a board game, right? Mm -hmm. But I don't. I don't have a Resident Evil one. Is there like a a company that makes like a zombie based military board game that we could segue into? Did I right just now? segue? In you did. Even? First off, this is totally unscripted. He has he has notes that are. I have two, two notes. notes. I have nothing. Compelling. <laughs> it's uh, it's five words. But somehow I've notes. segued into our first topic of, of what we now stock at bridge i'm wearing bridge today oh uh, i will be shilling i'm not i forgot to put my shirt on before we went live i also work yeah it's so actually his skin his skin looks it's like a green really, shirt it's actually true you should yeah. probably go see a doctor i i did he screamed and kicked me out uh <laughs> all right let's real fast on the comments before we get into that awesome segue you just gave me kai uh, says that resident evil needs to go back to its roots and be about evil living in a residence absolutely true absolutely true I, it's about a retirement home and all the evils that go on with elder abuse in america oh yeah fun yeah. game topic I thought it was about like how you're in the retirement home and some dude just keeps tasting your fudge. Oh yeah, what is that? The that's half the plot to Bubba Hotep, I think. Yeah, so the other half's like a mummy. Which is all the plot of Bubba Hotep, which is an amazing movie. I really like that movie. It's a good yeah. movie. It's a good movie. It's nice to finally know what happened to JFK. Finally, they've been hiding it from us and Elvis in all these years, <laughs> and now we know. And Bruce Campbell. And Bruce. <laughs> what happened to all of them? What <laughs> Bruce Campbell? What uh, did happen? Kai, I didn't watch the Monster Hunter movie like most of America. I watched like 10 minutes of it. Yeah? Yeah. It was enough. That's uh, kind of, it looked, it wasn't ooh bowl <laughs> level, but it looked like it was right in that just pretty bad. level of like, uh, this it was is. Just, it was just pretty bad. Because is... if you want to watch a Monster Hunter movie, you watch that one, uh, what's the, the dudes, they live in a bunker. Oh, what's it called? Can't remember. I remember it had like neon, it had a neon name and the guy's like in a bunker and he needs to go to another bunker to find a guard who's falling in love with over the internet. Um. I don't know. It was a really good movie. Is this a Monster Hunter movie? It wasn't Monster oh, Hunter. Is some monsters in it? Yes, Dan, there is another Resident Evil. It's called Welcome to Raccoon City, and then that was okay for what it was. 
But then they made Resident Evil on Netflix. The series. The series. Which has nothing to do with Resident Evil. Even though said it was a faithful uh, reconstruction. But uh, it really had nothing to do with Resident Evil. They sold me because that liquor looked good. <laughs> and I was like, oh, cool. I like that. And it's so sad because the guy playing Wes- Wesker, I love that actor. What's his name? He's like, he played Abaddon in like Lost and stuff. I yeah. Mean, I'm hitting the table again. I do that every week. I know. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but he's such a good actor and they just ruined him. Like, why couldn't they just have him as Wesker? Why don't they make a Resident Evil Code Veronica? I'm back on Resident Evil again. Why don't they just make Resident Evil Code Veronica the movie? I don't know. It's one of my favorite Resident Evil. I, Evils, I don't know. Favorite. Because they're not asking the right people. Love and Monster. Thank you, Ian. That was it. Love and Monster was that movie with the kid living in the bunker and he goes to another bunker. Oh, okay. That's so good. I did, I've never heard of that. It's but really it's, it sounds cool. Oh, Kai also knew. Thank you, Kai. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kai knew. Okay, so. Uh, well, there should be a poll popping up, but I don't know if it's actually going to pop up or not. Uh, or it's not even going to pop up at all. So maybe we'll, we'll work on that while if we talk about... If only we had a producer. War Games. <laughs> <laughs> She's off screen and very confused. Um, so you wanted to play a zombie game? I want to play a zombie game. Okay. With zombies. Yeah, I had an idea once for a zombie game I was going to make where you could play as two separate survivor groups and you're trying to like forage for supplies. Uh-huh. And then the zombies are like NPCs that just come and like, you know, wave through and stuff. Then I found out they made that game. They called it The Walking Dead. <laughs> and, oh, also, yeah. and also a game made by this uh, lovely company called Project Z. Yes, in fact, but that's what I was talking about. <laughs> is I know I was trying to get there. Thanks, yeah, <laughs> give me a second to recreate the poll that didn't work the first oh time. Oh my god! Oh, now it's going to recreate it five times. Ugh. All right. Well, anyway, so yeah, so exciting news for everybody on the bridge side of things. Just real fast, we are going to be offering at the end of the day, we're going to go live with over 150 SKUs of Warlord games. It's we're talking about Bolt Action, the Weird America one that I forgot the name. Of. I've forgotten the name the of all American the American one. Yeah, the uh, Ep- Epic as, Battles. No, it's the. Uh, Mythic America. Oh, Mythic America. Yeah, Mythic, Mythic America. Bold action, black powder, epic battles, which is the six mil one. Yes. Oh my gosh. Uh, That's a threat, by the way. That box is it comes with twenty five hundred figures. Slain. Slain. Yes. It's a really slain. weird Irish word, and I can't pronounce it. Kiss my not, axe. Because it's not slauncha. It's like slain, but it's not slain because it has an apostrophe over or it has an accent over the a. Let's get really so. weird. What's the one that has a Q in the middle of it? It looks like dual, but instead of a. Yeah, there's there's some there's some cool games is what we're saying. Yeah, some great. Check games. out and Project Z, the zombie game. Project Z, yeah, yeah. the Judge Dread game. The Judge Dread well, game is, yeah, is right. in as well. Yeah. So basically, uh, for those of you stocking up your retail locations, that is a, a huge product line that's available to you now through us. So check it out. Like I said, it's going to be live at the end of the day once we're done pulling our hair out and uploading 150 new items to the website. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. Oh, and there's the six mil one, uh, Blizzy is um, epic battles. So they do uh, American Civil War and they do Napoleonics. <laughs> Waterloo. The whole I was Waterloo defeated. Campaign. You won the war. Yeah. So you can play all of the, and they're really tiny. They're this big, and they, it, the, like I said, the box is a threat because it advertises on the front. It comes with two thousand five hundred miniatures, <laughs> which is no thanks. But they're like that small. Yeah, that's that's what I we call play that one. base coat cool. dry brush. It's really cool. I, I love Napoleonics. Well, we have them at Bridge. We, we do. Check them out. Are you gonna actually play them? Don't, get, don't play one. anything. It's like today I bought. I posted up my Facebook. I bought like this series of ten novels that I read when I was younger. Oh yeah. When I was younger, the first one came out in nineteen ninety nine, and then I like I lo- they arrived today, and I looked at them, and I was like, when did I ever think I was going to have time to read this? The box looks really is that high. <laughs> it's never going to happen. But it's nice to look at them. It's nice. It's, to, it's nice to feel those feelings. It's nice to pretend. <laughs> I, I like the feeling of getting a brand new game and putting it on the shelf and looking at it, knowing that's where it's going to be. Yeah, I just got the new. I do that with books. I just bought the new um, Siege of Terror limited edition. That's like six hundred dollars on eBay. I managed to get one, and... so that's okay. It just sits on my shelf now. I'll never touch it. Well, you know, if I ever need, looks it, really if good. If I ever need some funds, I'll just pull all like eight books or whatever there is so far, and just like list them and make like you know. Grand apparently. See, so it's not that you're buying things on an impulse that you won't use. It's investments. It's investments. Yes. To everybody, never wife, lose value. Use that excuse when you're buying these things. It's not a whole new Warhammer army. It's an investment for when the meta makes this valuable, honey. Why is all my stuff on the lawn? Yeah. So true. true. So yeah, war well, game stuff. He says we should play Zombicide, but Zombicide's a board game. I want a miniatures game. I want a miniatures game. You want to know a dirty secret? I've never played Zombicide. I think I. Everybody has. It's like Yahtzee with zombies. You move around your old dice. Oh, well, that's every that's every game. Oh, no. Every we're, game is Yahtzee. <laughs> we're pulling back the veneer now. <laughs> every game is kind of Yahtzee. It was Yahtzee all along. It's sort of just math equations and Yahtzee, guys. Oh, no, the gaming industry has been revealed. Well, Sometimes you roll two sets of dice. 
Sometimes you need a five instead of a four. Oh my. Yes, it's very variety. And speaking of variety, let's get into the hot topic of today. Because we've talked about, yeah, we're going to go buy some studded bracelets. I, I know where the bit was going to go with that. We're going to hot topic. The mo mom's going to pick us up at uh, 11 by the fountain. So I wasn't going to never shop the hot topic. Uh -oh. I was a Spencer's boy. Well, well, see, in my ball, they were beside, <laughs> beside each other. So it's it a joke. Like, yeah. Ireland didn't have that. We just, you know, we didn't have, we were so backwards, we didn't have time for emo kids. <laughs> Have they caught up now to like emo kids? I don't know. I've been there like fifteen years. I don't, I don't know what the. If you're, if you're watching from Ireland, let us know if you have emo kids. <laughs> Did some of them get over there. Do you, it's like, it sounds like a mesothelioma commercial. Do you have emo children in your house? If so, uh, all right. Let's talk about the big topic. You ready for this? So I'm gonna get all this stuff out of the way. Perfect. Get out of here, you. Get, get out of here, tank. Yeah. Uh, there we go. We'll move that out of the way because this Whee! this is what you all came for right here. Uh, the Leagues of Votan. I've been calling it Voltan. I can't read. Before it's... I get banned again, they don't release till tomorrow. Yes. Yeah. This is not... You. You're not allowed to have this. You cannot have We are showing this to talk about it. Um, just, just, just getting that dis disclaimer out of the way. Completely disclaimer. Yeah, it is, it is sealed. I gotta show that it's sealed, too. We haven't opened it. Um, so, A, I like these guys. I think they're kind of cool looking. But, I mean, I think they're great. Yeah. Genuinely, I, I like their kind of doofy little minor helmets. <laughs> yeah, they are doofus. Yeah, they, they that's, don't... Uh, and that's happy. And that's growly. And that's growly. That's shooty. <laughs> shooty. It's alcoholic. It's wompy. Wompy. <laughs> that guy's just dead. Just... <laughs> uh, so I like, like, the, I know that some of the, the, the jury is out on these designs, and every time they do a re-release, or a new release of an army, everyone's like, oh, I hate the design, I love the design, and it's polarizing. And if you're really excited about squats i mean and now you get them and you don't like them i understand but if not yeah maybe it's cool if squats. somebody else do toys. enough yeah me too gotta get back every day they listen to me my quads and my hammies are just gone oh sorry squats yes yeah yeah these uh, squats yeah yeah you could do squats while painting squats <laughs> or, uh, workout which who paints <laughs> <laughs> who who plays anymore who at plays? this point yeah Who's time so you know who can't play in some tournaments these guys. Oh my god. Because here's the hot thing today. So in what's going on, and I'll explain this to everybody, uh, they've released all the Voltan rules, and obviously with the book being out, good stewards of the GW line like us have not opened it and looked at the book, but everything has now been put out and people are looking at all the rules and everything. And some tournaments are actually banning these guys, saying that they're not allowed to be played at their current state because the rules are so unfair, theory crafted kind of based on what they're looking at in the books. I don't know enough about 40k to but know. Do they have the points? So mm -hmm. they're just looking at like the power levels because if they're looking at power levels, then yeah, it's going probably going to be broken. I think it's looking at like some of the abilities. Like for, they have something where it's you can't modify your dice roll when attacking them. It's something that basically turns off a lot of stuff in this game, and mm -hmm. I think people are you know they're seeing that and going, oh man, that shuts down a lot of different types of builds. And it's you know, a we all know GW tends to when they put the new stuff out, it tends to be better. That's kind of the cycle of GWs. The rules are always revolving. Yeah, yeah, and if you if you're a Stormcast player like me, you enjoy your time in the light, and then you slide back down to the middle, and <laughs> that's kind of where you sit for the next couple of years. That's why I fed goblins because you're never good. You never get in the light. With never kids. good. You just get to show up, and someone goes, "Oh, that's still an army." When you win a game with goblins, you're just as shocked as your opponent. That's very true. Skaven, same thing for me. When I if I win with Skaven, it's like, oh, that I must have cheated. I'm sorry, <laughs> that, that couldn't have happened. <laughs> but if you cheated as a Skaven or a goblin player, it's what you're meant to do. That's true. That's so the only way you can do it. Meta playing then. So what do you what do you think about that? Like obviously I, I don't want to speak for gigabytes. I'm pretty sure we're not going to be banning an entire army based no, on we don't do any of that stuff. for that stuff. But we're I know cool. some of the so, yeah, we are we're cool kids. We're cool kids. But some of the other tournaments are and the there's kind of an argument both ways. One argument being like, yes, experienced TOs and players can look at these rule sets and say, This is unbalanced and oppressive. It needs an errata before we allow it in. On the other hand, some people are not buying this to meta chase, they just like the space doors. The thing doors. is, though, the thing is, my problem with that is they have playtest teams. Like, I know a bunch of guys who get this stuff like six months, a year early and start playtesting it. I mean, they're local Atlanta players. I'm not going to name them. I'm not sure if you're meant to know. Uh, but I think you do. Uh, who get this stuff and are part of uh, of a larger playtest group. Like, isn't there, uh, who are those guys out there who do um, Lost LV Open? Like, they get it. They're all yeah. part of the playtest group. Frontline. Isn't yeah, Frontline Gaming. It? Like, they get it. So they, they these are all competitive players who have playtested and tried this. So, I mean, surely if something was so unbalanced and didn't have a counter, it would be found. Uh, I'm sorry. I, uh, did you just say surely GW would catch in balance before it gets released? I'm saying they have a full playtest team they of do. independent people who would surely catch it. 
I, I don't know. I don't know that balance in the Warhammer game, either one of them, no is possible. Is no game is balanced. Yeah. I think No game is balanced. I think the games that balance are the ones that are top down, like Legion, built to be very even on every side. Very I think of a game the only balanced game, it's called chess. And even that's not balanced because one person gets to go first. True. That's why I play so. checkers. <laughs> No, what? I, <laughs> that's like the way I play. We just throw things that's, at each other. I just play checkers. I just throw in the. We just sound an air horn and we just start moving in whatever yeah, we want. That's not how you guys play checkers. That'd be a good idea for a game. Just an air horn. <laughs> an air horn. <laughs> you, you start moving simultaneously. That would be. Can we make the it new so more chaotic. stressful game than so uh, Operation? Because I think a lot of my generation has anxiety because of Operation. So I think Gigamech needs to come up with a new anxiety-inducing game. Giga it's Mech like don't quit. Gigamech Giga Giga needs to come up with his own games that might fun the Kickstarter. Oh, uh, I'm so uh, bitter. I'm so, so bitter. I'm so bitter. Well, fine. I won't pitch to you my idea for Don't Wake Daddy, but with air horns. Maybe I should make quit Stalin a live-action game. That would You're, be. You jostle for position. Like they that. did that in the forties. <laughs> oh. uh, so, what do you what do you think about that? What do you think about banning uh, an entire product before it has had the chance to be played? Obviously, yeah, it's been play tested, but like before it's in the wild, you know. You telling me, what do I feel about canceling something before it has been vindicated or, you know, decision made in in the court of public opinion? Yes. Wow. It's a heavy topic. It's got deep layers of meaning. It is. But in this one, we just talk about this. No. It's <laughs> deep layers that you would need a miner to dig through. Like that guy with his little mining tools and hey, stuff. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. I think it's stupid. Yeah, I, yeah, I think it's stupid. I, 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 at the end of the day, this has happened in AOS a couple of times. Like Dragons came out and everybody got really upset. And Dragons were pretty unbalanced in the beginning. And then they've backed down. And now they're still good, but they're not unbalanced. I think the same thing here. This is going to be really good. And in a couple of weeks, they'll put out an errata. And it'll go back down. The rest of the army will come out, and you'll see how things work. Does it sound really good right now? Yeah, G Dubs wants you to buy this box, so they they're not going to put out a brand new army. I want you to buy this box. Rules. I bought a, I bought a hundred this box. I want you to buy this box. I think I have like twenty seven left. I was going to say you have a lot left. Like, no, I don't have a lot left. Like this is claimed. That's why it's yeah, sitting here. There's, there's like twenty eight left. I think yeah. Overall. So, so be sure you get them if you get them. I guess the rest of the army comes out in a couple of weeks. Because I know they've released a lot more pictures of models. There's the guy with the drones and the hood that I really Yeah, like. I know next week is Zinch, and then I don't know what's after that. Oh, yeah. Zinch and Lumineth. Lumineth. Yes. <laughs> Two armies that I guess people wanted a box set out of. Yeah. And that precedes the, I want to say, fourth one, Lumineth one, book one, at this one, point. One is the Army of Light, and the other is the Army of like Crystals and Colors. So yeah. you shine the light in the crystals, you get the colors. Ooh. Therefore, the Lumineth equals Zinch. A prismatic refactory box. There you go. I like it. I thought you were going to say one of them is the Army of Light and the other one's the Lumineth or something. <laughs> one of them are valiant warriors of, of truth and the other one's some dumb elves. I mean, everyone knows elves are dumb. Uh, oh, that's true. Hot topic. Uh, hot topic, <laughs> are elves dumb? <laughs> yeah. They're the worst. Yeah. Unless the Lord of the Rings, like, second age elves. Are well, you know, elves. that seems like, oh, our, our poll is currently hey! <laughs> perfectly balanced, as all things should be by Thanos. This is better. So which I've is actually better? started watching House of Dragon. Yeah? I've watched the first three episodes. <clears throat> Well, then what's your opinion on this? I mean, Rings of Power is still better. Yeah, I, I, I tend to agree with that, too. I've only watched the first episode of I have of issues House with, like, the House of Dragon. I, I guess it's supposed to be realistic, but they have, like, a nice little jousting to celebrate a baby thing, but they end up just, like, getting into a melee and killing the crap out of each other. Seems like a not a way to keep your armies and your lights and your... Yeah. Down. And then you have, like, they go to war in the Step Zones. Spoilers, by the way. And they, and they <laughs> you know, they, then it jumps three years, and then, like, Damon Targaryen is just not very good like general <laughs> no he does seem to just kind of decide to do everything on his own yeah. and screw it all yeah, up yeah yeah which i mean I, I i like a flawed fantasy character i think what got me is it, it kind of feels like you can almost feel where the studio said okay but put in more game of thrones stuff in here like we need to make it a little more gross and violent like so just make a scene well even down to the, the really theme fit. music being the game of thrones theme music instead of not being just something original yeah. yeah whereas the rings of power even though howard shore is doing the music doesn't take that original theme and it, it's by the way like ian, ian, ian just committed uh like a, a cardinal sin and said the rings of power is written so horribly <gasps> what well i mean it is an appendix <laughs> turned into a amazing. show so it's I, a great show i haven't seen the new episode i haven't seen this week's yet oh i mean today yeah oh yeah i've like watched it today. Well, i already have people commenting one guy commented today um one of my friends and he said oh it seems like it's finally getting somewhere I was like, seems a bit harsh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, and also on the on the highlight of things, <laughs> if you've learned anything from the Hobbit and Lord of the Rings, the real joy is the story along the way. Yeah, it's a journey. It's unexpected, <laughs> but it's a journey. Yeah. yeah. 
I uh, because you gotta get there, and then back again. And then back again. Yeah. So you know. You know. <laughs> We're cool. <laughs> I I want to say though as a personal <sighs> shout out, if you are doing that thing where the movie the whatever the new show is comes out at two a.m. and you've already posted a spoiler when I wake up that day. Oh, it wasn't I a spoiler. You. He no, just said you. like it's no. He didn't want this. He just said it seems like it's finally getting somewhere. I'm like oh, it seems like it's getting somewhere. Like you. Introduce Isildur and Arendel. And, I thought it's, you know, it was getting somewhere. We we you have our whole bunch of stuff. on, and you got uh, Tyre Muriel, the Queen. And there are all these cool characters you know the names of if you're a nerd like me. Yeah, and they're kind of coming. They're clearly this is starting to bring it all together in the Southlands to yeah. start kind of the main push of the storylines. We've introduced all the different. The only thing with the last Rings of Power episode I didn't like no Harfoots. That was it was a completely Harfootless episode. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I was, I loved was every part. I liked all, it a lot. It was, it was, it was all dwarf. Numenor and it was all the elf there, right? Yeah. Was it, not What's it was a lot of dwarf and a lot of the, uh, um, the escaping elf guy whose name I just completely blanked on. So they, Alan, 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 <laughs> Alan? <laughs> the, the raptor. Alan. He, he's a great character. Around dwarf. I, 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 I liked it, and I like that what they've done with that show is they've given us like three different types of Lord of the Rings stuff. It's like, oh, here's your happy Hobbit fantasy, wild magic adventure. Here's your kind of gritty, grim sort of orcs are taking over sort of story. Here's your epic, heroic story of an elf and the kingdom of men. And they've kind of taken all three of those parts and they're sort of shoving them in together now to make a good story, which is how you build a good narrative. It's pretty much Lord of the Rings. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They they broke it apart, and now they're kind of bringing it together, and I like that. It's Written a smart like way to write this. like it'll be a teen this. show for the CW. First off, Ian. E. Do not be smirched my teen shows on the CW. Listen, Legends is a fantastic CW you show. You haven't lived that Riverdale life. Riverdale's also really fun. I like that. Even though it's now gone forward like five years and he was in the military and fought in a war, but not in a war, but he's dressed like he's from the 40s, even though it's supposed to be present day. But there's never any cell phones in Riverdale. No, I, I think it takes place in some weird SCP time zone universe. It's in the same universe as Serene, the Teenage Witch, which was also a really good show. I remember that. Yeah. yeah good animatronic cats, too. No, no, not the original. No, the one on Netflix. Oh, no. I'm talking yeah. about the one with the. I know you were. <laughs> with Clarissa. With Salem. Yeah. Uh, uh, I've lost the ability Riverdale. to see comments, so you're going to have to tell me. Riverdale me. is a treat. Yeah, if I'm reacting to a horrible. He's Batman on my Rings of Power. He's Batman on my Riverdale. Ah, oh, jeez. What are you going to do next? Batman to Gilmore Girls? Come on. Oh, oh, hold on now. Hold on now. We'll fight. I'll take these earrings off and we'll start fighting if somebody wants to let's come after my Gossip ladies. Girl? I never really watched Gossip Girl. I only watched it like, like a year ago. Oh. Is it any good? Yeah. Oh, I'll check it out. Yeah. What do you guys think about Gossip Girl? <laughs> Let's talk about some relevant TV it's really, stuff. It's really interesting when you see like Taylor Momsen's in it and she's like 12 and now she's like been in a rock band for like 11 years. It's really weird to me. The rock band's really good. So. That's good. That's good. Uh, well, the good news is it looks like Rings of Power 1. So. Expect more when you spend as much as Amazon has on this show. I mean, how much did they spend on, like, the Superman movies and stuff? And, and what's the uh, Justice League? They're crap. Yeah. They had to spend more money and bring back the original director just to fix it and make it five hours long. Yeah. And it was... Let me put it this way. It's good. Have you seen the new Thor movie? You want to talk about spending money and having just absolute garbage? I'm personally offended. <laughs> Can I say that? Because Ragnarok is by my me favorite. or by the movie? No, by the movie. Yeah, yeah. Ragnarok is my favorite Marvel movie. Yeah, like, it, it straight uh, up was. Yeah, it's like they said, you know, Ragnarok was great. Let's take Ragnarok and then just like take the dial and go. <laughs> yeah. And you know what was really cool in 2022? You know what really, really works and is totally not outdated by Kino 15 years ago? Screaming goats. Yes. The screaming goat joke. I laughed at the first one, and like halfway through, there was another well-timed bleat that I laughed at. But my God, it that joke goes. They go to that joke like a hundred times in that movie, and it's not. Funny. Yeah, it's not. It's it not. It, that movie. Here's my theory on this. I think. Do you know why? Because you can win Kino every three minutes. It's true. It's the gold stream every three. Sponsored minutes. Sponsored by Kino. Yeah. <laughs> I I think that. Uh, uh, um, now I'm what you drink is fine Starbucks coffee. Mm, sponsored oh. by. Not sponsored by We're not sponsored by anybody. Sponsored We're by anybody. unsponsored. Do we have to pay them? We just got demonetized by me showing that cup. Oh, so. right. Well, there goes our eight <laughs> cents we were making today. No, no point playing the ads. Now you uh, just stick with us. Oh, sorry. sorry. Uh, <laughs> Emily says, don't understand what's going on with the surge of gritty old franchise reboots. Sabrina, Riverdale, and that weird Winx saga. What the hell is a Winx saga? Oh, Winx was a children's cartoon? Yeah, I vaguely in my head can see a picture of this. I don't know anything about know. it. Yeah. The best children's cartoon made into a reboot was Banana Splits. If you have not watched the Banana Splits movie, you should watch not. the Banana Splits movie. 
there's a scene where they put a guy into you know one of those wizard things and then they saw him in half and then they pull it apart and it's just guts and stuff everywhere yeah, that's, it's a I, horror movie, by the way. That sounds like it sticks close to the source material <laughs> yes, pretty well. Yeah. Yes. They do play the Banana Splits theme song over and over and over. It's, uh-huh. it's a mix of Banana Splits and Five Nights at Freddy. Yeah, horrifying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So if you've ever been terrified by an animatronic pizza bear, then yes, this is absolutely the game, the thing for you. <laughs> when in doubt, go with the goat. Uh, no, no, we don't need no Tom Brady here. That's what he meant, right? Uh, that's what I'm assuming he means, yeah. Or an actual goat. Uh, we should get an actual goat. You should have the copy in the Giga mug. Jen, I would. Twar I at. Twar. 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 <laughs> Twar tweet. Twar I at Gigabytes. I could have a Gigabytes mug. However, I am currently in the, the Bastion that is Bridge. Yes. And therefore do not. And Jen, you have no idea where we are right now. Oops. <laughs> Just shit. It's right there. Everyone knows. Uh, uh, well, Blue's okay, so yeah, Clues my reboot. That gone. would be amazing. Uh, oh, so many comments. I love it. Let's see. Could not finish New Story movie. Yeah, New Story movie is bad. Except the part with Christian Bale, which is you know, he's yeah. a completely different movie. So, so can I, I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap on. Let's wrap. Let's let you and me wrap. Uh, don't think of me as a principal. Think of me as a principal. Okay. Uh, the Thor movie could have been pretty easily fi- fixed if they just let. Boxing more complete. Actually. That was yeah, weird. Yeah, that was yeah, great. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I wish I could flip the chair around so the kids would understand. I'm talking to their level. Uh, the Thor movie could have been fixed by letting whatever movie Christian Bale was in be the movie. Because he was clearly in a different movie that whole time and having sure. a great time with it. And I just love the part where he rips the head off. The yeah, head. and like, oh. he was, we said, we said this on the last show, he was doing a great energy for that character. It's another Marvel character that was a cool bad guy that just kind of gets gone. John Gaspi says, a gritty Barney becomes a serial killer and whispers, I love you, outside his victim's home. They have a gritty Barney movie. It's called Death to Smoochie. And it's a dark I comedy with Robin Williams Smoochie. and Edward Norton. I forgot that movie existed until yeah. right now. What a great movie. Can you tell I was president of my movie society in college? Mm, yeah, I could tell. Mm-hmm. I also didn't have a lot of friends. It's also president of the Game Society. Complete nerd. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, like I said, I didn't have any friends either. So, yeah, Death of Smoochie was a good movie. We need to have a movie day in here. All right, the show's over. We're gonna go watch. Uh, Death I love the new Thor movie. It's okay, Nicholas. You can be wrong. Oh, <laughs> I liked I liked parts of the Thor movie. I liked parts. I just a lot. got such a disapproving. <laughs> <laughs> like we're just, just giving hot shots like it is, you know. Yeah. There's, anyway, there's some parts in the Thor movie that I, I genuinely liked. I liked Christian Bale. I liked the the God Butcher stuff. I liked the seeing all the different weird gods and things of the different planets too, and stuff. Zany. That was neat. Like I wanted more of zany. that. I just don't need the zaniness. I see. I I wanted either more zany or more Ragnarok, where it's like heavy metal kind of fun. You can't have a zany movie with one of male plot lines is stage four cancer. True. The tonality of that was real weird. Hard. How to be like, ha, 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 screaming goats, dying of cancer. Well, I guess if you don't count the first ten minutes of uh, Guardians of the Galaxy where his mom dies of cancer because she hooked up with a planet. Don't, don't do that, kids. Yeah, don't, don't hook up with a planet. <laughs> don't let it be your captain. Thank you. <laughs> I really expected more of a response to oh, Captain I, Planet Joe. Oh, I was, oh. I was just well, because I was trying to think of how to turn it into the Don Cheadle as Captain Planet, because then he was War Machine, and we could just loop this whole thing back around. It's it's a circle. Disney owns everything. They own literally true. almost everything. True. Yeah. Anyway, oh, Rings of Power is still winning. Anyway, so Rings, Rings of Power. We have to really talk about tabletop stuff most of the day. So yeah, yeah. Sorry, probably... we got off on the Thor thing. Well, that was the yeah, big topic. That's is why we is, call it Rambles. Is can is it is the concept of banning a new thing for this? Like, let's say because any other game like this, Marvel. Crisis Protocol, The Sentinels that came to out. To be honest, these days I tend to just ignore anything that's said before release because you know you, Rings of Power got review bombed before it came out. Uh, what else got review bombed? Something else got absolutely destroyed before it came out. Morbius, but it deserved it. So. Well, it was just bad. Yeah, it got destroyed, and that was the production. But you, but you wait till it comes out, right? Yeah. You wait till it comes out. Yeah. So even though we all knew, it's like the Dungeons and Dragons movie, so the new one. Out. We all know, we all know what that's going to actually be like. But we're going to wait because maybe there's a chance. There's a chance. But no, I say give it a chance. You only got to wait, what, like 12 more hours or something like that? Yeah. 12.01. Gigabytes won't be open, so you got to wait till like 10 a.m. <laughs> don't so, show up at 12.01. 24 more, 22 more hours, I guess, at this point. Please don't camp out. The police will come up and ask you to leave. <laughs> Especially there. Ooh, Andor first year. Have you yeah, seen buddy. Andor? I haven't seen Andor oh, yet. Oh, my goodness. Andor. I have... Is- I've actually fallen behind because of House of Dragon, Rings of Power, my wife's out of town, so I haven't watched most of the stuff. I've fallen behind in She-Hulk. I've fallen, I haven't watched Andor. I've fallen behind. I watched all of Cobra Kai. I haven't. I haven't yet because I know I'm gonna. Oh, I'm gonna binge so it this weekend because so I'm really good. excited. So good. I. I so when good. I watch one episode, so I have good. to watch the whole thing. So I, I have don't to set know. That I don't know. So it's already getting to season six. Oh okay. And it, yeah. it's already. Got, I'm pretty sure it's already confirmed. They're gonna renew for season six. I'm interested to see where the story goes. I have a feeling I know where the story is going based on season five. Like, mm-hmm. so good. 
I'm glad. That is what a, talk about a series that started off on YouTube TV. Um, that's who had the license to it first, and they made it as a YouTube TV show. And like, who would have thought that plot line could expand into six se- or five seasons and actually be good and be interesting to be based on drinking game as well? Every time he says Mr. Miyagi, you just like take a shot. I'd be dead. Yes, yeah, you'd be, <laughs> you'd be, you'd be dead. murdered. <laughs> you'd be dead. Uh, <laughs> so. But anyway, that was great. Was Russell really Crowe was good as Zeus, and I'm glad they made Zeus like just kind of slovenly and more more Zeusy than more, like more Zeus-y. actually, yeah. you know, make him more. I love like, it's like Dionysus him. sitting inside going, "Love you, Dad." Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so what we, what's going on besides this in the industry? Let's just let's just move. Well, we don't because you'll see my belly in the mic. What else we got going on? Oh, I didn't know that was a throw to me, or if you were about to. No, it was a question. Yeah, oh, okay. What's else going on? Also, because you have the things closer to you. Uh, I do have some things closer to me. These are, uh, I was going to move them on set, but they're really big and really heavy. Yes, so they are. They're yes, two they games. Are. Let's, let's see if we can gently move this one uh, without it falling apart. So you want to talk about something that is pretty bad? This is poker. That is true. And this is right. poker with extra stuff. As balanced as poker can possibly get a B based on, like, you know, randomized cards. But, I mean, you can you can game your, your hand, right? Yeah. I don't know how to play poker. First off, I'm a blackjack guy. And I'm really bad at it. See, same thing. Uh, I don't know how to play poker either. I'll be, my I'll idea of going to Vegas and gambling is I take like a hundred bucks and I go, "This is what I lose now." <laughs> that's that's kind of where I go. I go in and I'm like, if I can make fifty dollars and pay for dinner, yeah. That, so you that's start with a hundred and you leave the day with fifty. You're like, I made fifty dollars. Fantastic. That's a net bonus. Yeah, that's a bonus. That's how I math expected works. to lose all of this and now I have. But yeah, so we've carried more games. We have these at Gigabytes and at Bridge. So Bridge just started carrying distributing. Mm-hmm. Gigabytes back to Kickstarter on this one. So we have the Kickstarter edition of Gigabytes. And that's some Plunder the Pirate's Life. It's a pirate game because yeah. we like pirates. We do like pirates. So I've uh, opened up both of these games now to do all the photographs and stuff. so heavy. <laughs> they are so heavy. But, man, the amount of stuff in these is incredible. This is Antimatter uh, is a full poker set plus a space board game. In space! Plus, uh, like, some other types of mechanics and stuff. It's something to where, thank you, it's something to where um, I opened it and just kept pulling out components and things. Oh, I'm out of cardboard mm. <laughs> yeah, this is what you came to the show for is David smelling stuff out of the box. <laughs> look at this that's a lot of stuff look at those chips look at those chips so even just I'm as a sorry full poker for the screechy plastic sound you're getting yeah but you should get that ASMR right in the microphone you know, dude, listen to this plastic bag at home <laughs> <laughs> you know that's like the second ASMR joke I've seen someone make today I don't know if they made it on the chat but they made it must it be because our voices are so good for it mine's not it's like I'm reading through Whatever is wrong with my nose every day. I haven't breathed out of my nose in 10 years. But so. yeah, so you actually play, you have your poker cards, and then you have your like your loot. And yeah. Your that's, that's kind of cool. So the way it works is you, you pick basically your team, sort of like a Necromunda Gangs kind of thing, and you're playing for that team trying to earn money. So it's got a little bit of a campaign setting too. Like you play multiple games and try to get certain money in certain scenarios. Or you can just play poker with it. Or you can play poker with their weird space rules. So it's a, a ton of stuff in there. Yeah. Um, and it's... This is a lot. Card deck. Yep, and it's yeah. and you get a cool fifty-two card yeah, deck. Yeah, so you got your factions. A lot yeah. of them, which are like phalanx and malian and Ferron and other. Oh, and on the names. bottom they have cool phrases for like what their thing is. Like one of them is like "burn the galaxy in blood" or something. The other one is like "go fish." <laughs> yeah, the other one's like "make friends." <laughs> Isn't that always the way? Like you look at like Eclipse. And it's like there's a hedge money who just want to like conquer the galaxy. And then you have like the flower people who are just like, yeah, we just want to grow and infest everything. Yeah, we you just know? like that. Oh, these are really cool. They are really king. cool. You can check out some of the pictures. I swear, if you just want a really badass like like uh, poker deck, you should get this for only $140. <laughs> so I was just trying to work the price in. This uh, is $140. It is. But it's $140. It is. Yeah. In terms of like a nice poker set, yeah, yeah, work. it's pretty comparable. It actually is kind of comparable with the, the, the level... Uh, blood is hard to light. That well, okay, yes. Unless the person is an alcoholic, Justin. Or Irish. I said an alcoholic. That's uh, not alcoholic. That's alcoholic a- implies that there's a problem with it. There you go. <laughs> turn this weird colored thing away from the screen. There. But anyway, yes, yeah, super so, cool game. So uh, do, we're not gonna open plunder because trust me, it will explode. <laughs> this is one of the ones that it, it cannot open sideways. So. 
Plunder is really cool. I, I just get a video of, of my son singing Pirate's Life for me because he loves singing that song. That would be perfect. We'll use that for the commercial. Yo ho, yo uh, ho. This is another game that I opened up and immediately thought it was life with pirate ships because you get uh, little pirate meeples, which we call peoples, but that's just the word people. So if you've got a better name for pirate meeples, please let me know. That was the hot debate in the pirate office yesterday. Meeples? Would we end up with Buc Buccaneeples? <gasps> Buccaneeples is pretty cool. Buccaneeples, I think, is what yeah. we ended up with. Um, so this game... It's, it's exactly what it sounds like. You're going to get a pirate ship. You're going to collect crew and sail around. There's a ton of different maps that you, you sort of play through in ship. scenarios. Yeah, you get little sails that you, you upgrade one in. Mast or two you actually ship. get to pull the little guys off when they die and throw them in the ocean if Is you want to. Is this if you get hit by a cannon? Or are those actual meeples? Those are the people. Oh. They, have, they have little trifold hats. So oh. you can tell. So you can make sure they're pointing. And you put little cannons on your ship too. So you upgrade them and float around and try to steal stuff and find treasure. And there's a card that says the real treasure uh, was found along the way. So friendship, I think. Or you stole someone else's treasure. That may be what that card is actually referring to. I don't know. But this is a cool game. Check it out. I have no idea what the MSRP is, but it's at Gigabuts right now. And it's a really cool looking pirate game. And I actually kind of want to play it legitimately, like, because it has that. It's for me as a gamer. This is an interesting concept on game stuff. If you've got a game that has, like, lots of different things to interact with, like things I can stick into stuff and a, a spinny thing and, like, a, you know, just different interactive toys. That, I think to me that makes a game seem a little more valuable than like, like you're playing in the wrong club. Is, <laughs> I like mousetrap. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, different. yeah. the thing different. you can stick in and uh, throw it, different. bop it, slap it, kill twist your, it, kill your family. <laughs> what? Kill your family. Uh, uh, that's the bop anyway, it joke. yeah, I know. Don't kill your families. <laughs> Please don't. Uh, so I like a game that has like like stuff to interact with it because that to me it adds more of the value to it like getting a game and it's just cards is cool but sometimes it's like that extra little thing cards plus a spinner for life counter or some tokens or something like that really helps make a game more interesting to it me deluxe components it, 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 and it helps when there's no you can't we can't pan the camera to see the wall of games over here there's no shortage of games out here I mean you could just start tossing games off we'd the wall we'd be killed <laughs> we'd be dead we'd be dead so the the, the the idea for like creating games because we kind of had the thing yesterday uh, last, yesterday last week I don't know what day it is yeah so we just switch off for a whole week yeah we, we just change shirts out. and get go um, this is all pre-recorded two months ago so I hope we're right about Rings of Power and all that stuff we're really good at guessing <laughs> which is funny when you had a topic about not judging something before it releases you could pre-record this and judge it before it releases Oh no! That's <laughs> meta. That is like Inception levels. Could we and we could we could record a video judging this video before it got released oh, about man. judging video. Whoa, sh <laughs> just mind blown. Anyway, what's the point? I got an industry question for you as we start kind of winding it down here. At what point do you down, level? I'm just going. <laughs> Forty minute warm up, and here's <laughs> the show, everybody. We're going live. Oh crap. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. So what's the point where you go, okay, the cost is high because of the extra components and stuff, but the attractiveness of that is important as well. So is there like, how do you as a game designer or someone pitching something to us or pitching one of these, where's that kind of threshold of how much stuff is going to go in there that's going to raise the cost of the product? Yeah, overall? there has to be a fine line where you just don't overwhelm by having too much and make someone totally overwhelmed by actually setting up. Someone was posting they got oats worn yesterday mm -hmm. and i saw it took him three hours to set up the game it's like oh three hours three hours to set this game up i'm looking forward to play and i was gonna go oh god i'd eat it before i'd set something up for three hours and yeah god. that's uh so i mean there is a fine line of the price and the amount of imp the amount of components making the components look good but not overwhelming and having stuff forever so i think this skirts it because it has you know has it's poker but it's also a strategy and it's not more than that the components look really nice and it's at a nice price point of $140, so it's not, like, terribly bad. Yeah. but And like we said, for a for a poker set that also has a game and kind of two other styles of games in it, and then that's whatever what I mean. you I think if you have, like, for. three to four styles or different things that you can do in a game to make it unique, I think that's probably a sweet spot. Mm -hmm. That's true. Um, that's something that I, I've been trying to talk with the, the few people that we're talking with about games. Is like, think about a solo play mode. Think mm -hmm. about... If you've got a multiplayer thing, think about a four-person multiplayer. Just other stuff you can do to entice people because if you think about it, we're buying a game that's 60 to $100 and we're saying, this. I expect X amount of entertainment. Well, that's the thing. You have to be able to explain to someone, well, what, what do you get for $140? Because, again, we had that conversation last week where people have been trained to expect cheap prices mm -hmm. and that's just not the reality. And I think reality has now come home. Yes. So I think now you have to figure out, well, how do I get people to accept that reality that they are going to, A, spend... Two hundred dollars for Votan, one hundred forty for this. This is sixty, I think, or something like that. 
I think. The sheet's over there, otherwise uh, I'd be able to tell you. But anyway, like, what makes it worth that amount, and, you know, what more can I get out of it? Like, there's a reason Cards Against Humanity is only 25 or $30, or whatever it is, because there's only really one way to play it, and you only play it, you only play it in the party, you only play it once. Yeah. So it's cheap, you're not going to play it often. Where something like this, say you have, like, Frost Tape, and Frost Tape is going to be, is it $200 now? 240 I think it's over 200 I want to say 230 240 somewhere over or, massive, it's at least massive, or Massive Darkness or all in Massive Darkness Gigabytes is $900 and the market value on it is $1,400 right now but, Sorry, I was, I was coming to but see you but the amount of time like getting someone to recognize the amount of time you play with that the campaign the, yeah. the stuff the replayability is worth that money that's the goal and when you think about it I mean, obviously made an exaggerated response because I spent way more than that on one faction for Age of Sigmar so like yeah the value is there probably it's that initial price shock of seeing that number and not thinking oh well, man is, but the problem equals... is people have been trained for years to look for or to be given no value and then the, the problem is on the, on the on the back end the industry right is see we got to the serious conversation yeah now here here's what you came for <laughs> the problem is yeah, yeah 45 to, minutes yeah, in. 45 minutes me complaining about the thor movie to get here <laughs> it's called burying the, the problem lead. is for years you had people who want to make games and they didn't think about the aftershock Right, they didn't think of well, what happens after I release this game, and what happens after like how do I make money? And they're all, and they're literally all finding out now. Oh, stuff costs money, and I'm losing money. Yeah. And for you, like so now you have, hopefully you heard, starting to get designers out who understand that prices have to be a little higher to to cover up. You, you know, say you have to repack your box, and you say you make an error in the components, you have to repack it. Well, that's going to cost you more money, and you have to have. It built into the price. I say that because my messages, my Slack messages are blowing up right now because of this, uh, <laughs> topic you have to have the price match to be a reasonable living wage, I suppose, living price, living profitable, that you can actually sustain your company and keep bringing out good components. Right. Otherwise, you're going to keep having, like, bottom of the barrel products that skate by, you charge a lower price, you can't afford a good artist, so you're getting crappy art, so you're releasing a crappy game, and you skate by again. Yep. Or the alternate, you know? which I've seen you have a fantastically awesome game and your margin on it is 1%. Or negative percent. So yeah, some. you're not making any money, so yeah. you're known as the person that made this, fan it's not this, this fantastic, beautiful game and can never do anything else and now you're in the hole for all the money to yep. get that out to people and it's like, the product is incredible, but everything else got messed up and now yeah. the product is stuck. So def definitely it's, it's it, the goal is, is making that to make the game and, and having the components, like having the good components uh, I mean, these are not, they're really nice chips. They're not the nicest chips I've ever seen. But I guarantee you, if you were to look at the deluxe version, they have gorgeous chips. Yeah, it's 200 and something dollars, 240 dollars. Yeah. So they, they recognize, oh, we can have really, really nice chips. It's going to be 100 dollars more. But you know, if, you're, that's, if you're playing this game on a, uh, let's say, a Wormwood table at home, you're probably going to get the, the thing. nice you gotta chips. Look at your, your, you got to look at your audience, too, because there's always going to be the people who only want to the 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 lower price stuff or search for lower price stuff or want the cheap stuff and as much as they're the most vocal usually they're usually the ones you have to ignore like if i looked at every kickstarter that we fulfill at bridge and we, we fulfill a lot of kickstarters at bridge now and you listen to people who are complaining about oh well why are you charging this shipping or why is it taking two weeks to ship you know five thousand copies of this game instead of it being next day or the review i got today where a guy gave me one star on one of our sales because oh. his package arrived and was left on the ground. It wasn't put in a bag and tied to his gate. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> sorry about that. You can look that. at my Facebook page because it's literally right there. And it's just oh, weird, I'll get my crazy, keys and go drive unreasonable that. expectations that people have. It's insane. So you kind of have to broach that, ignore, <laughs> sift through the weeds and ignore the the, 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 the feedback that's just silly. Yeah. And then, But still offer a good product and not cut corners. But offer a reasonable price, so it's really no, it's fine line. so really balance those twelve plates, and you're yes. fine. You made a successful yeah. game. How don't hard give too many, but don't give too many components. Yeah, not too many components, but enough. <laughs> not, not, but too not too many, many. versions. Don't and do too much. But it balance be good, like 100 plates. but not so good, but not bad. Mm. Okay, is that clear, everybody? Do you understand the lesson of that? Do everything right, and it I won't be a problem. That. I just rambled. Well, that's hold on. That's at the bottom it. corner of the screen. I can see it. I don't actually know which side it's on based on the camera. Oh, it's on that side. It's on your side. Yeah. The logo. But yeah, we have a few. Uh, I'm looking at the stuff because I know we only put a few items. We actually have a lot more releases here that we have got in, but I guess we, we don't have time. We got spicy dice. We have spicy dice. We have a lot of stuff uh, for the bridge side as well that we're kind of <laughs> figuring out where to put so that we can put it on screen <laughs> and everything. Uh, if you don't know, bridge is growing exponentially. Exponentially. And I can actually say it now because we have signed a lease. Yeah, so. So we are moving. 
Uh, bridges constantly. moving. To, constantly moving, jiggling. Uh, bridges moving warehouse. Uh, so that's in process. Yes. <laughs> so if you happen to see a gigabytes or a bridge that's after and they look really frazzled, it's because we are. Yeah, if you see one of us in one of these shirts, uh, like just laying on the side of the road, please roll us out of the gutter. Uh, or tell us to get up and just keep moving to pallets. Yeah, just walk up and kick us until we yeah, keep moving. We have a lot of stuff coming in, a lot of pallets coming in, a lot of products product going out, a lot of products being moved, finalizing the lease. Well, the lease is finalized this week. Starting to move. And I mean, we already we hinted that we have 150 plus new items today. But even, even with that, out. right? So even you even look at the you look at the move, right? So we're moving warehouse. We're going to. Quadruple? Triple in size? Is I don't it know. written up there? I'm no, I'm just thinking. Oh. Thing, <laughs> huh. I was doing math. Okay. And you look at that. Like That's that's an example of, of, of planning ahead because we expected a certain amount to pay and we ended up between the security deposits and the lease and the cam and all the other stuff paying one third more again. And But because we plan, mm -hmm. we were able to do that. It's not, it's not something that puts us under pressure. And it's that same thing in designing a game or anything you do. You need to plan and put it ahead and have the space. Um, you know, even down to planning the move, planning, you know, the timeline. Yes. Re Being realistic about it, too. Planning the insurance. we got to rent a, uh, a box truck. You know, mm. you got to get your security in. you got to get the, the internet in. And that's all these extra costs that you have to budget for. And it's, it takes a lot of brain power. It does. Well, right down to... Is. Does each office have a port for data and a port yeah. for power oh, yeah. and like that yeah. kind of stuff? TV and, and then like down to like the lines of, of the pallets and how much, and putting in your, your pallet racks locations and stuff that we never did here because we're so unorganized most of the time. Uh, <coughs> yeah. Thanks, Calvin. Yeah, he's like, congratulations. Oh, thank you. For but then you take that into a, and that's like on the large logistical scale, right? And there's companies who have done that and have never organized themselves and they're, they're, they're falling apart basically on the in the insights if you're on the back end of the industry you've you see the waves being formed and yes. luckily we're we're able to, to grow and we're, we're planning ahead so we're actually a bit more organized unlike most millennials we're not falling apart on the inside i fall apart on the outside i mean i said yeah. the company not me personally i wear my tears on my sleeve and my it's, cheeks and my chin. yeah I just float everywhere got a lot of uh, soggy but no if you're like there. someone looking for fulfillment and publishing and stuff like we're we're still operating right now i mean we're taking in four or five containers next week and it's not, it's work, <laughs> but it's not, context. it's not over, it's not over straining our resources because we have plans. Yeah. So it's, it's really interesting. It's the same when you're designing a game or you're, 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 you know, opening a game store. Anything in life. Why would you open a game store? Uh, <laughs> but, uh. Because it's a lot of fun and it's been going on for 15 years. Segway hey, into the last I just topic. Segway again? You're, you're just leaning oh, forward man. slightly because we're segwaying all the way down this street tour. We have no plan. No. Well, it's, you're doing fantastic. <laughs> Thank <laughs> Actually you. Actually, throw into that. Thank it's you. the 15th anniversary of Gigabytes. Weird, right? Yeah, we talked a little bit on the last show. Uh, and they've uh, the, some of the videos have been coming out. Um, we have 17 viewers right now. What? Are, who are you? So we ask your questions. So we uh, we we've been putting out some videos uh, showing off all the different like you know fifteen fun facts about it. I think the there's been one first the one. Oh okay, so I've only seen I've seen the back end of them being edited. There has been one video posted. I've seen the one and it was the uh, I think it's that you're Irish. I am I Irish. Was, uh, I was surprised to find that out. Yeah, so we actually have an inbuilt an inbuilt um, you know translator on this thing. Yes. So it does true. turn it into like you know old English. Mm-hmm. Or new English. He's, c he's completely just. So if you turn it off, I press this button here. All you hear is potato, 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 potato. American potato. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wouldn't it be Idaho? I guess it would be. I don't yeah. know. You should have just been Idaho, Idaho, Idaho. <laughs> I don't think we ever made. Then everyone it would think you're just coast. doing like a, an American football like thing, you know? Yeah. What What did they say? What did they say in American football? It's not Idaho. What did they say? Did they name a state? In, just in football, I'm confused. Yeah, Where? they're like, they're like when they're doing the thing, they're like, you know, Idaho hike. Oh, oh, the call sign. It would be a call sign because it's part of the plays. So I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I clearly played a lot of football in my Chicago. Life. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> That's a typewriter. <laughs> yes. It's a Chicago. Uh, that was definitely typewriter. a typewriter. I was uh, quoting there. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So 15 years. How do how, how do you feel? Old. Okay. That's the show. Good night, everybody. That's, that's the whole interview. <laughs> no, I feel great. I mean, it's pretty amazing that you can go for 15. Omaha! Thank you. Omaha! Omaha. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> Peyton Manning used it. Okay. All not, right. not Idaho, then. No potatoes in that field. It's a hot potato. Uh, no, I feel good. 15 years. Gigabytes has been around 15 years. We've moved. Again, we're moving. We've moved once, twice, 
three, three times, times a lady. lady. <laughs> yeah. Uh, four or five times we've grown an expanded with gigabytes. Uh, and our lease, we're actually renewing our lease there too at the moment. But that's, we're staying where we are there. So yes, not, yes. Uh, Until that car. No big out. announcement there. Until the say. flooring store moves then, out and we can have their spot. <laughs> yeah. That'd be cool though. Or we can uh, expand into that weird clock tower thing above us. The Ooh, bell tower. Cool. That's actually yeah. empty. Well, actually, there's no floor right there. There could be a whole game table. But no, I mean, it's pretty incredible. Like, you go for 50 years, we've seen a lot of games come and go. And, like, a lot of industry stuff has happened in 15 years. Yeah, I mean. Experience a lot of ups and downs. I I don't think, as a, you know, frequent purveyor of gaming comic stores all my life, I can't remember any other stores that have lasted that long. And that's not just blowing smoke. Like, legitimately, well, I can't I mean, there's, think of the there's ones. There's stores in Atlanta that lasted a long time. Yeah, there's, there's Dr. Nose. And Dr. Nose and is the only like one. That. I, that's the one yeah, I just go they're to. Like, they're, they're, they're mostly, they all have comics. Which yeah. I wonder if that's what sustains a lot of them for so long. They've become really well-known to comics. Like, you have to, like, own something to stay that long, right? So, show my hat We own miniature gaming at Gigabytes. Yeah, there ain't yeah. no other store in the area you can match us for that. Nope. Uh, and selection really very few stores can match this selection levels of board games levels but like you have to again you have to it's the same thing as designing a board game right you have to offer a lot of things to make it worthwhile for someone to come in and spend their hard earned money mm -hmm. so the same way in a ga game you gotta have three or four components you gotta offer a bunch of things you can't just be a magic store anymore you can't just be card games or board games so gigabytes is miniatures and card games and board games and food and beer and community events you know, there's that uh, one one plastic figure of Icarus that I have seen in the store for three years. Yeah. Have you seen that <laughs> the little Icarus with wings plastic figure? Hmm. It's been in Gigabytes for three years. Oh, nice. I, it just moves around a bunch. You know what I'm talking about? What? Someone buy that guy. Yeah. <laughs> He's been there forever. Uh, Meeple Madness, Jimmy. Meeple Meeple's been around. I'm I don't know if they're, I'm sure they're watching. Uh, I want to say eight years. Yeah. I know so Titan's been around a long, long time. time too. Titan's been around. Well, so Titan Smyrna has. Titan Deluge changed to level up. So mm -hmm. I guess, th does that count as continuity? I don't know. I guess yeah, is, is that canon? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> is, is that just a follow or is that a store, any of store? Or? But I mean, I, I used to go to one in Kennesaw called like Heroes that was there for three or four years that went away. Uh, there's one in one. Cartersville that was one. It's like been little ones all over the heck. There was one right up the street from Gigabytes. Uh, the Raven's Nest, I think, is what it was oh, called. Oh, that place. Yeah. So, like, there's lots of little ones that I've noticed show that up is. for a couple of years and then go away. It's because they do only one thing. They do a, a lot of these stores, and, and uh, not to speak ill of the dead, but <laughs> that's just what stores are. Um, you can't offer one product and then discount that product. It's not a long-term strategy that does not make. And that's yeah. a big issue with the industry as well. And it's going back to the same thing. You can't breed the idea of discounts and cheapness and expect to remain long. You can't make a board game and have a discount if you want to have long-term life. You can't open a business and offer services but discount them if you want to be there for a long time because the second something goes wrong... That's it. And especially if you're banking your business on one product line. Let's say you are you only buy stuff from Warlords, for instance, and then for whatever reason, one day you can't get that product line anymore. I wonder with a lot of industry, and we see with Bridge where people are like, I only order from one distributor. And, you sit there and, and I sit there, and I, as, as Gigabyte, it's been in business for 15 years, and I go, but why? Yeah. Like, sure, don't buy off Bridge, right? You don't need it. But why would you not have an Alliance account, and a GTS account, and an ACD account, and a PhD account to have the most options that you can offer? Why narrow yourself to one thing? Um, even if it is us, which is a great narrow. Yeah, I mean, it should be us, but yeah. you, should, you should have a Bridge account. Uh, <laughs> eventually we'll eat all those other companies and <laughs> yes yeah. eventually one day one day um so i mean yeah it's it's pretty great to, to see the experience and the changes and the stuff that's gone on uh over 15 years yeah i mean i think here's the 15 more fi oh god <laughs> well we, if we're if doing 15 this years my son's 21 i can sell him to company and i can retire and then you can just do so whatever 15 you want. more let's yeah. do it all right all right so in 15 years i'll have you on with him to hand the keys over <laughs> we'll have a whole ceremony yeah oh that'd be great oh. he'd be like i don't want to own a game store yeah i'm gonna play football dad <laughs> And I was like, no. Darn, he's a successful jock with lots of money. But what about my miniatures and toys? He won't play football. Oh, okay. He'll play soccer. He won't play football. I said football. I, uh, uh, yeah, we don't, want, we, don't, we don't need nobody getting head injuries and damage injuries. And no. Well, I think at that point, by the time he's playing, maybe football will just be all digital anyway. <laughs> Like fantasy football, like yeah, D and D. Yeah, I, w I want the I want like a Ready Player One, but football. So all the guys are off on the side in the things, and then they're just running in place. Cool. Yeah, 
on screen. Yeah, you can throw in cool things at that point. Yeah. I've always said football would be better with dinosaurs and trees, so I really think digital is the way to take it that direction. Mm-hmm. Like, just imagine you're running, and all of a sudden, Velociraptor on the field. <laughs> you're gonna make you're gonna make that uh... touchdown throw a lot faster if during the snap you've got a dinosaur clever girl in you. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> that would... I'll play my clever girl. Dino football. That's pretty good. Dinosaur football. Dinosaur football. All right. Well, I think we need to All right, wrap this up and down. go design dinosaur football now. So, what would they make the what would the skin of the football be made out of? Or is it just a small dino dinosaur? Egg. It'd be a dinosaur egg. I'm gonna smash it though. Yeah, that could be one of the rules. Oh, put <laughs> uh, one of the other dino Gallimimus is on the side. Like, hey, they used to make a video game that was kind of like that. Like where it was a football. There was a hockey game and a football game, and you could like, it was like monster hockey or something like that. Again, there's a, there's there's 16 of you. You know what this is. And, yeah. and you could actually win by scoring, but you could do all different plays. Or I used to win by just killing the other team. Uh, and they're all monsters and aliens and stuff. And you had the alien I monsters. kind of vaguely. So there was a football version, a hockey version. I don't know if there was any other version. Well, that's the two most violent sports. It's true. Besides uh, shuffleboard. So, yeah. <laughs> Those cruise ships get wild. And cribbage. And cri- oh, wow, there's a lot of cribbage. Mm. They bring up a lot of bad memories <laughs> in that cribbage war. Uh, so, uh, I guess we're about wrapping it up here. It yep, looks like, just looks like an hour of talking about nothing. <laughs> hour of something. That's basically what Seinfeld did for like 10 seasons, and they're millionaires, so. We should have a Netflix show. We should have a Netflix. It could be about nothing. I like it's that. True. It's just nothing. Show just us. Nothing. A it's... day in the life of a hobby store. We would lose every customer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a day in the life of a hobby store is just a slow 30 minute zoom in on you crying in a corner, <laughs> surrounded by invoices. <laughs> That's it. That's the whole thing. It's performative art. So he's going to go cry with a bunch of invoices right now, and I'm going to do some work. I'm going so. to try to find my way into my office, which is currently full of boxes that are taller than I am. That's so true. So they're like four foot tall. It's a four and a half. <laughs> it's, a, it's a box labyrinth in here. So uh, much like – I'm trying to think of a good David Bowie reference to get out of there, but I can't. Uh, see, I used to make a Minotaur reference. Oh, that's yesterday. also yeah. a good labyrinth. Yeah. 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 There's a lot of good labyrinths. So go have a labyrinthian time. I think that's a word. And uh, we'll catch you uh, next week for more rambles. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye.